All right, here we go. We have to talk about free wedding photography. Now, if you're somebody who's looking for a free wedding photographer, well, this really isn't the video for you, but congratulations. It's a big day. It's an important day. And, it, you know, there's nothing like your once in a lifetime wedding day. Now, if you want to watch this video, you are welcome because you're going to hear a little bit about the plight of the photographer and some of the concerns that photographers have. The fact is we have a lot of panicked photographers right now. There are articles being written. There are new services out there for brides and grooms to get free wedding photography. So what does a photographer do? Now, look, the basic fact is we've always had to deal with this at some level. Honestly, you may have even had a free wedding photographer or maybe you have been the free wedding photographer. For who? Well, maybe a family member, a friend. I mean, a lot of times people are looking for a free wedding photographer because they really honestly can't afford a photographer. You know, a lot of times the people who are looking for free wedding photography can't afford the photographer or they don't value photography. They don't value photography in a way that they really care about. And if they don't care about capturing those moments well, then they don't care about your experience. Now, there's a number of things that we can do, and I want to talk about that and what you can do as a photographer to not worry about free wedding photography. But first, I want to discuss this basic point, is that there are so many photographers out there now that the competition, that even free photography is irrelevant. Don't even worry about it. Don't worry about it at all, because there's only one thing you can do in such an environment. When photography in many ways is a commodity, you have to break out of that commodity shell. In other words, you can't be going after the lowest price. You can't be the photographer for everyone. You need to be the photographer for something specific. You need to niche down. That doesn't mean you can't do other photography, but that is what you have to develop your reputation on. In other words, you need to brand yourself because when I am photographing, when I actually had people knock on my door, and I don't do weddings anymore, but when I did, I had a photojournalistic style. And why? Because, well, I was a photojournalist. And there were other photographers saying, hey, they're photojournalists too. Photojournalistic style is part of their package. All they did was take candids, and that's not photojournalism style. But who am I? Who am I to say that they can't put that in their package? Could I get mad? Could I get upset? No. All I could do is show the difference between someone who's going around taking candids and real photojournalism style. Now, I don't do that anymore, but today I still have to earn photographic clients in the same environment and conditions that most photographers have to deal with. And I don't want to be the person, I don't want to be a photographer for anyone. I don't want somebody who is looking for a photographer. I want somebody who's looking for me. So if people are looking for you because of your style, because of your reputation, your brand, you can then charge thousands of dollars for photography, for weddings, and people will pay it. There are a lot of people willing to pay for the peace of mind that they know that they're going to get the top notch, the best photography they can possibly get in a style that they want. And quite often that has to do with referrals. And we'll talk about that in a moment because I think that's really important. So don't be concerned every time you hear about somebody saying, oh, there's another free app. There's another free service for photography. Don't, don't worry about that. They're taking clients that would never have been yours anyway, at all. They would not have been yours. Maybe one or two once in a while, maybe, but most cases it's not. You have to earn your client base. You have to earn your, even more important, referral base. And if you are chasing after the dollar to the lowest point, you're going to have issues because people who hire inexpensive photographers well, then they refer people who need inexpensive photographers, their photographer. And quite often, if, they, if someone needs an expensive or really says, I want a high-end photographer, they're not going to refer you because you're the low-end photographer. 
So you have to decide where you fit in this whole hierarchy. And that is up to you. Now you can charge $500 or be part of the whole free system, but it's gonna be hard to stay in business. Because yes, you have to understand your cost of doing business. I do have a video on this channel about the cost of doing business. Check it out. It really is important because if you want to do what you love to do, you need to charge a price that will keep you in business. There's so many things we can do as photographers to continuously update who we are and continuously stay ahead of the game. And one of the things I highly recommend is to offer additional services. And in many ways, that is what's taking away our opportunities from us. People are doing just this. They're offering other services in, in a package to combine with their main service. So they're making money off of their main service and then they find ways to package photography in with it at a low or inexpensive or free price. But we can play that same game and still be effective. But know that, look, our brand is a photographer, but we can combine different services with our package. Maybe it's video. Maybe there are some design elements. Maybe there's maybe virtual reality. It, you know, get, in, get ahead of the curve as you develop your photography packages and as new technology develops. Be there. Try all the new technology that's out there and add it to your packages. That's what I refer to as the combination code, combining something new to separate yourself from the competition. So if all you're doing is snapping away with your basic DSLR, no great lighting, just natural light photography, you're really just a commodity. And just a basic fact, sorry to say that. I mean, you're just a commodity unless you're able to build relationships. Maybe it's your personality. But you can't go around telling everybody you have this great personality, nor can you go around telling everybody you have the best service because that's just standard. Now, you can share information and share stories of how you have great service or how you made the bride laugh. That's fine. But ultimately, you're still a commodity until you can really point to the elements that separate you. Now, here is a basic fact, and that is every and this is great news quite honestly the great news is nobody has your eye and each photographer has their eye and we can develop our eye and bring something new that way but it's going to have to show in the images but nobody has your eye and you can stand proudly on that alone and charge the rates you deserve on that alone so think about the different ways you can separate yourself Think about the different ways you can continuously increase your rates and not worry about the free and the cheap. You're just concerned about finding the right people who don't want a photographer. They want you.